Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about the traditional square of oppositions. The traditional square of opposition. Here, we are going to represent with the help of a square how the four types of categorical propositions are interrelated. What kind of relationship they have with one another and the relationship is one of opposition because these propositions they differ in quality and quantity or both so how are you going to draw this square uh, on the left topmost corner it is going to be a the right topmost corner you will write e below e will be o and below a will be i so this is the placement of the four propositions a e i and o now the square will show how a e i and o are related with one another the relationship between a and e is one of contrary the relationship between i and o is that of subcontrary and the relationship between a o e and i is that of contradictory so this is what is uh, depicted with the help of these arrows another thing you must keep in mind when you're writing uh, this uh, when you're drawing this uh, square of opposition is this uh, the subject term and the predicate term must be same otherwise the opposition won't work for example in a proposition if the subject is s and the predicate is p you're writing all s is p you just cannot write uh, for example in e proposition no q is r so here it will not work you have to maintain the same subject and the predicate terms uh, in all the four proposition for this traditional square of opposition to work for you now a o e and i these two pair of propositions are described as contradictories when are propositions contradictory they are said to be contradictories if one is the denial or the of the other that is they cannot both be true and they cannot both be false which means if one is true the other has to be false so it is clear that two standard form categorical propositions having the same subject and predicate terms but differing from each other both in quantity and in quality are contradictories you see a proposition is affirmative on the other hand o proposition is negative also a proposition is universal and O proposition is particular. So they are differing both in quantity and quality. Therefore, they are contradictories. If one is true, the other will be automatically false. A and E propositions are described as contraries. Two propositions are said to be contraries if they both cannot be true. That is, the truth of one entails the falsity of the other. Look at this example over here in the picture. All judges are lawyers, A proposition, and E proposition is no judges are lawyers. So if you hold any one of them as true, for example, if you say that all judges are lawyers, then you have to say that no judges are lawyers is false. But if you say that all judges are lawyers is false and no judges are lawyers is also false, that is allowed. Which means A and E propositions are contraries. That is, both cannot be true. If one is true, the other has to be false. But both can be false together. Subcontraries. This opposition holds between the proposition I and O. 
This is just the flip side of contrary relationship which was uh, held between A and E. There we have seen that both cannot be true together but both can be false together. In the subcontrary relationship between I and O, both cannot be false together, but both can be true. For example, if I say some apples are green and in the O proposition, if I say some apples are not green, both can be true together, but both cannot be false at the same time. So this type of relationship which holds between I and O is described as subcontrary relationship. Thus far, the examples of oppositions between propositions have been such that uh, we have seen there is a sort of disagreement. But opposition, this term in the present context is a technical term and applies even where disagreement in the ordinary sense of the term is not present. Thus, when two propositions having the same subject and predicate agree in quality but differ only in quantity, there is an opposition even though there is no disagreement implied. In such cases, the, the truth of the particular proposition was asserted to follow from or to be implied by the truth of the universal. So, for example, in the A proposition, if I say all crows are black, from there it naturally follows that some crows are black. If A proposition is true, then automatically the I proposition will be true. This type of relationship is described as, as subalternation and in this situation the universal proposition is called the superaltern and the particular correspond, uh, corresponding particular is uh, referred to as the subaltern, uh, subaltern. In this case the superaltern implies the subaltern which means the subaltern that is the particular follows from the universal whatever the universal is saying in it the particular is contained so the particular follows from the universal proposition it is very important to remember here that this relationship is uh, 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 coming from A to, that is the universal, to the particular. The opposite is not uh, uh, correct. For example, if you say sum S is P from the subaltern, you cannot move up to the uh, uh, proposition all S is P. Let's understand this with an example. In the I proposition, if you say some animals are cats, from there, you cannot travel up to A and say all animals are cats. That will be false. So that movement is not allowed. It is always the case that the superaltern implies the subaltern, which is the particular, and it is not the other way around. So this opposition between a universal proposition and its corresponding particular proposition is known as subalternation. In any such pair of corresponding proposition, the universal is called the superaltern and the particular is called the subaltern. Here is uh, an example. You can say, if you say the A proposition, all teachers are idealistic persons. From there, it follows uh, uh, that some teachers are idealistic persons. Similarly, in the E proposition, no teachers are idealistic person. From there, it will naturally follow that some teachers are not idealistic persons. Now, this chart is very important. Given the truth or falsehood of any one of the four standard form categorical proposition, you can immediately infer the truth and falsehood of the 
other remaining three categorical propositions. So uh, uh, take for example, if uh, you are given an A proposition and it is true and you are asked about the truth or falsehood of the E proposition, what you are going to say? If A is true, then automatically E will be false. Why? Because A and E have uh, uh, the contrary relationship in which both cannot be true. If one is true, the other has to be false. Therefore, E is false. Again, the relationship between A and I is that of superaltern and subaltern. So, if A is true, then I is automatically true. A and O is related uh, uh, as contradictories. So we have learned that if one is true, the other will be false. Therefore, O is false. Similarly, in E proposition, if E is true, then A is false because of the relation of contrary. Uh, they are contraries. Uh, therefore, both cannot be true. So if E is true, then A has to be false. If E is true, I will be false because of the contradictory relation. If one is true, the other has to be false. And in the case of O, if E is true, O will automatically be true because E is the superaltern and O is the subaltern. Now, what will happen if I is true? If I is true, then E will be false because the relationship is that of contradictory. But A, the relationship between A and I is that of subalternation. As we have uh, learned that you cannot move from I to A, that is from the particular to the universal. So we will say that if I is true, A is undetermined. Similarly, the relationship between I and O will also be undetermined meaning you are not very sure about their truth value. In this way, we are going to remember and understand the uh, interrelation uh, about all the four propositions and how the truth or, or falsehood of any one of the standard form categorical proposition will immediately affect the truth or falsehood of the remaining categorical propositions. Okay, so let's solve an example here. All spiders are eight-legged animals, A proposition. Its E counterpart will be no spiders are eight-legged animals. I counterpart will be some spiders are eight-legged animals. And the O counterpart will be some spiders are not eight-legged animals. Now let's say O is false. Then what will be your immediate inference about the truth value of A, E and I. If O is false, A will be true because they are contradictories. E will be false since if O is false, then E is false. Otherwise, the subject class, which is spiders, will be empty. And I will be true because of the relation of subcontrary. We have learned that both can be true, but both cannot be false together. So, if O is false, then I must be true. So, that's all for now. You can uh, download the solved exercises uh, from the link which is given in the description box. In the next video, we will uh, uh, do uh, further immediate inferences and we'll uh, learn the methods of conversion, obversion and contraposition. So thank you for watching. If you like the videos, please let me know and subscribe. See you soon. Bye-bye.